Hey, what's up, everybody? It's been a minute since I did a video. Uh, I had a couple people check up on me and ask me if I was all right. Uh, I did a video a while back on my mental health and what it is and everything. Uh, I'm manic, manic depressive bipolar. I have the same mental illness Robin Williams had, Rodney Dangerfield, and uh, usually I'm extremely depressed. Well, usually I'm sad. Uh, sometimes it gets so bad it's, I have clinical depression where you're thinking about suicide, it's just hopeless. And you feel stupid because I have a good life. My house is paid for. I don't really have any stress other than my health. I have a wonderful wife. But it's a chemical thing. Uh, your emotions are different chemicals released in the brain that make you feel different things. And, uh, when my brain isn't producing the chemicals that makes you feel happy or normal, when the brain's starved of those chemicals, uh, it doesn't matter what's going on in my life i'm in a black pit and everything's hopeless and then i've been homeless and i've been manic and whenever i'm manic it's like i got all this energy i'm on top of the world and i used to love it when i was younger it was a free high it's like being on cocaine but now when I get manic, uh, and I crash down from it, 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 it takes a lot out of my body now. Um, and I was in a real, real deep depression. Uh, it lasted about four or five days. Real deep depression. And when I get like that, my strongest strength is I know myself and I've set up roadblocks for myself to protect myself and others from Mark. Uh, I got a theory that like whenever I get mad, my theory is pain makes people angry. Uh, you know, you get up in the middle of the night, you stub your toe, you want to put your fist through the wall. Uh, same with emotional pain. As human beings, whether people want to admit it or not, we all want to be accepted and loved. When somebody does something to emotionally hurts us, the first reaction is we get mad and we want to strike back. Uh, so, you know, I kind of believe that that anger comes from emotional pain or physical pain. And when I get real depressed like that, I withdraw. Uh, number one, I don't feel like doing anything. Um, I don't feel like doing anything at all. It's a real hopeless feeling. Uh, and it, you feel like you're crazy because I've got a good life. But those chemicals are real things. Uh, like, look at grade school. You get in a fight at grade school and it's a skin fight, you know, just fist. Both kids barely get hurt. You get into high school, though, and two guys get in a fight, 
people get fucked up. Because that testosterone is a real fucking thing. It increases the aggression level, and, and testosterone is a real thing. That's a hormone, but the chemicals, like, I think that's why I got hooked on, uh, I think that's why I got hooked on pain pills so easily, because they release dopamine into your brain, and dopamine is a chemical that makes you feel euphoric and happy. And I'm never really happy, so I kind of got addicted to feeling happy, you know. But uh, I know myself very well. Like, when my check comes in, I give it to Amy. I keep a couple hundred, you know, and I give most of that away. Um, but I do that to protect myself from myself. You know, when I get real depressed in a manic depressive state like that, it'd be real easy for me to slip up and get some dope. It's not good for me to be running around with a lot of money. All I ever have on me is gas money for my bike, you know, which it don't take much. I put premium in it, but, uh, so, and I withdraw to protect not only myself, but other people from me. Uh, when I'm depressed like that and I'm hurting like that, I get very irritable. And a lot of times when we're hurting, we lash out at the people closest to us, you know. And it's a way of me, and plus I don't want to radiate my depression on other people, you know. When I do a video, I want to be positive. I don't want to be negative. The world's negative enough. But when you're having a manic depressive state episode from your bipolar, it's, it's bad. Uh, the best way I ever heard any psychiatrist explain what bipolar is as they said, you know, most human beings, a normal brain, there's a cap on how high or how low an emotion can go. With bipolars, there is no cap. Some people can feel a, a, a emotion so intensely that they'll kill themselves or they'll have a nervous breakdown or... Uh, and he said that, and every emotion is like it's under a microscope or a magnifying glass, you know. I always say none of my emotions are soft. None of my emotions are gentle. They're all very intense. When I love, I love with all my heart. I'm all in. When I rage, I rage white hot rage, you know, when I hurt, I hurt deeply. Um, and I know myself. That's why I set roadblocks up to not only protect myself, but other people. You know, if I'd go lashing out at somebody, even some of the friends I've made on YouTube, I would feel terrible, you know. But a lot of times when we're hurting, either physically or mentally, we lash out. Uh, I know I do, so I try to protect myself from that, you know. <clears throat> I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't want to be a dick. And like I said, the world is depressing enough. When I'm in a manic depressive state, I'm not gonna get on YouTube and try to do a video. Number one, I don't feel like it. All I wanna do is sleep. And number two, all, this, all it'll do is bring everybody down, you know? I don't wanna bring everybody down. I wanna cheer people up. Uh, I'm always clowning, trying to crack jokes and shit. Uh, 
I've done that my whole life though and I I think it's because a lot of times the people that are joking the most are really on the inside hurting. Uh, look at Robin Williams, you know. Now, when he killed himself, he had a, a not, it wasn't just a bipolar, it was a, some kind of other mental thing that kicked in in his brain, but all that shit's chemical, you know, it's all chemical and, and, uh, I just, when you don't see from me or hear from me, it isn't that I forgot about people or that I don't care. When people don't hear from me, it's usually, it's, it's pretty much gonna be one of two things. Uh, I'm dead or I, uh, I'm in a very depressed or very angry state. And people shouldn't have to deal with my depression. And you know, I'm used to it. At first I studied psychiatry, psychology to, to I wanted to try to figure out where the shrinks were going. I wanted to know what they were doing things for so that I could do combat with them. And I have made counselors break down and cry. One of them in particular, I had to go to task through the courts and uh, I, was, I started dating this gal that was in my task group. And the counselor started on that shit about Oh, uh, you should, you can't, you guys can't date each other. It's bad for your recovery. And, uh, she pissed me off. I told her, I said, you know, the court said I have to be here. So I'm here. But you can't tell me who the fuck I can fuck and who I can't fuck. And I manipulated the whole group into turning on her. <laughs> I got uh, the whole group was, yeah, you can't tell him who he can have sex with, and da 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 And she ended up running out of the room crying. That, that woman was in tears. Everybody was attacking her. Oh, shit. Love will turn you around. Turn you around. How do you know when to stay or to go? She's made that way. She's not to blame. When they look her way, she ain't really trying to cause a scene. It just comes naturally. Oh, girl. I cut, cut the front yard. Then I'll wait for Amy to come home for lunch. And then I'm going to go for a ride. But yeah, that's why I wasn't on. Uh, and I've been de dealing with this my whole life. The best thing I did was I finally studied my personal mental health issue. And since I did that, I don't think about killing myself anymore. It's not an option. There's a cycle to it. Uh, and what goes up, it's gonna come down, and what goes down is gonna come up. 
with me, it's real high, it's real low. There's rarely any middle ground at all. Uh, that Billy Joel song, Extremes, pretty much sums it up. Uh, that's it right there in a nutshell. Just comes naturally. Oh, the girl can't help it. Man in cell block 10, but the strangest one of all was a friend of mine who spent his time staring at the wall, staring at the wall. Well, he looked at the wall so strong and tall. I could hear him softly curse. Nobody at all ever climbed that wall. But I'm gonna be the first. I'm gonna be the first. Well, the warden walked by and said, son, don't try. I hate to see you fall. For there is no doubt they'll carry you out if you ever touch that wall, ever touch that wall. Well, the years gone by since he made his try, and I can still recall how hard he tried and the way he died. But he never made that wall, never made that wall. Well, never been a man, never shook this who <coughs> <coughs> can. But I know a man who tried Newspapers called it a jailbreak plan, but I know it was suicide. I know it was suicide. There was a guy in Illinois that had a work camp. They'd send short-time non-violent offenders uh, to Hardin County Work Camp. Yeah. There's a guy, you know, uh, in the prison system, word travels around through kites and shit. Nowadays, they got laptops and computers and all that other shit. Tablets, they didn't have that whenever I did my time. We didn't, the cell phones weren't even a thing they were but only the very rich had cell phones uh, but yeah this dude he had three months to go was down at Hardin County work camp and got word that that his old lady was that big dick Bob had been by the house you know and he fucking Ran from Arden County's work camp. It's like, you fucking idiot, man. He had three months left. In Illinois, I don't know if they changed the law, but back when I did my time, you escaped. That's five years. Across the board, no good time. Straight five years. Five years flat. And, uh, 
you heard his old lady, Big Dick Bob, don't been by the house. It's either Big Dick Bob, Jody, or Sancho. Somebody's banging his old lady. And he escaped from Hardin County work camp with three months to go. Uh, everybody was saying that. Fucking stupid motherfucker. Because what's going to happen now is your old lady still going to be fucking around just for another fucking five years instead of fucking three months. Got three months to go, man. Now she's out there still getting fucked. And you just got another five years added on your sen sentence. It's like, way to go, stupid. Ain't no pussy worth all that, man. Uh, she gonna fuck around on you? Is she worth having anyways? But see, if a dude goes to prison, like my ex-wife, when I went to prison, I expected she was gonna fuck around. Uh, I mean, women like sex too. Man, I wasn't shocked. If Amy went to prison, I wouldn't fuck around. And she wouldn't fuck around either. Oh, speaking of Amy, <laughs> I used to tease her all the time. Well, St. Amy of a sissy. I said, you know, me and Amy, we watched that movie Grease, the original Grease with John Travolta and uh, Olivia Newton-John in it. <laughs> and I was teasing her. It's like an inside joke between me and Amy. Uh, they sing that Sandra D song in the movie, you know, and I teased her, I said, you know, you ought to put that leather jacket on and quit being Sandra D and tell me, you know, tell me about it, stud, and put the cigarette out. The other day she sent me an audio message on on uh, our messages, and I figured out how to get it as my ringtone for my phone. <laughs> so now when my phone rings, it goes, tell me about it. Stud. <laughs> she hates it, but I love it. <laughs> God, she, she, don't, she don't say that very often. She knew I was depressed and shit, so she sent that trying to cheer me up. I took full advantage of it. It's not my ringtone. The only problem is, is she's saying it real soft in this sultry voice, and you can't hardly hear it, you know? Uh, yeah, tell me about it, stud. <laughs> Where do I put them keys right here? Yeah, check out this gas cap. You gotta do this. See? You gotta put this in there. You gotta turn it like that. Tell me about it, stud. Yeah, Amy got the, see, squirrel. It's on its, she got him a little picnic table and then a little bar. It says nuts bar. And it's got little bar stools and shit that they sit, they sit on the bar stools and shit and they eat the nuts. And that mama one, is coming right up to her now. It gets within a foot of her. She's got away with the critters. Look what she did with me, right? Uh, let me see. I'm trying to keep in my mind that Thursday, uh, <laughs> Tommy Thunder's gonna be on Rocky Strong's channel. I don't wanna miss that. But where the fuck is it, man? Where's my I'll be back, I gotta see if my I need need my knife.
And you got chills, they're multiplying. And she's losing control. Oh. Yeah, and then this is my, for winter time, keeps your face warm, see? But it's on. Once it's strapped on, then you gotta adjust it. Or if you're ever short on cash and you need to hit a gas station, just kidding. I ain't gonna do that again. That got me put in prison once already. Nate's all excited. His uh, brother Tommy called. Uh, Nate's nephew got accepted into a college for uh, on the basketball team for a scholarship. His brother Tommy used to work at the courthouse when we was kids. And Tommy got us out of a lot of shit, man. A lot of trouble Tommy got us out of. But there came a point where, where even Tommy couldn't help us, you know. Uh, but Nate said that Tommy considers me family. His uncle did too. That's a funny story. Uh, <laughs> Nate's uncle would only stutter when he was going to chew somebody's ass. And Nate called me one day and he said, man, Mark, can you do me a favor, bro? Because Nate don't drive. He's been Nike Express his whole life. He likes to get his drink on, so he figures it's better not to have a license at all. So I don't get a DUI kill somebody, but he, he said, man, can you do me a favor, bro? I said, J I told you, man, I told all you motherfuckers, there's nothing I won't do for you other than get on my knees or bend over and grab my ankles. Other than that, yeah, what do you need? He said, uncle fell down and I'm worried about that knee of his. You think you could come over and take us up to the hospital? I said, sure. Well, I got there, and Uncle was not a happy camper because it was football day. Finally, we got him to go, and we took him up, and COVID was going on. So me and Nate Dog dropped him off at the hospital, we, and we went and sat at the park, and they told us at the hospital they would call us whenever he was finished. So we're sitting there. We're sitting there at the park waiting. About four hours later, they call, say we can come get them, and they'll have them out in the where you drive through at the main entrance there. So we we get there, and uh, he gets in, and I start pulling up, and he goes kick 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 kick. And I'm like, oh, shit, Nate is going to get his ass chewed like a motherfucker. He goes, K -k -k God damn it, Mark. <laughs> and my brain's like, Mark, Mark. <laughs> he goes, why the fuck did you bring me all the way over here? I missed all my fucking football games. And this man has done everything right in life. He put two of Nate's cousins that aren't even his own kids through school, college, paid for. Ain't no way in hell I'm going to disrespect this man. Uh, I had no other defense. I did what I do. I started, I started singing James Taylor, whatever I see your smiling face <laughs> to him. <laughs> I'm like, whenever I see your smiling face, I have to smile myself. Because I love you, Uncle. And he goes, get, 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 get goddamn crazy white boy. And he, he, he hit his leg. And he looked out the window. About 10 seconds later, he started laughing. And they said, are you laughing, Uncle? And I said, oh, I got you now, Uncle. Yeah, so he, get, 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 goddamn crazy white boy, he said. I miss that old man. He, 
I look forward every month to taking him grocery shopping. I miss that old man. He was a good guy. Real good dude. He must have been a ladies man too back in the day because all the women come up to him. Oh, Alan. And they go up to him in the fucking grocery store and start talking. He don't go to them. They come to him. He uh, told me one time they were down in East St. Louis and he met Ike and Tina Turner. He actually said that he, t and I'll go ain't no liar. He, he speaks the truth on everything, but he said he told Ike to keep his goddamn hands off of her because he seen them outside the building that they were at and he said I was grabbing on her and yanking her around and shit and he told I could keep his goddamn hands off of her. Uh, there was a bad race fight down in East St. Louis. Uh, a lot of black people got killed. And Belleville, which is right up the hill from East St. Louis, uh, the federal government at one time said that that either you hire some black cops and some black court people at the courthouse, or we're not sending any federal funding, funding, you know, to you. Well, Nate's family never got fucked with in that town because if you look at pictures of his grandfather, he's in rags. And then all of a sudden he's in these nice tailored suits and fucking leather gloves and pimping hat. And uh, at his funeral, a bunch of uh, mobsters were showing up, handing his wife envelopes with money in it. Uh, his Nate's cousin, uh, he knows what happened. But he hasn't told anybody. But uh, everywhere Nate's grandfather went in that town, all the white people were like, Hey, Mr. Simmons, how you doing today, Mr. Simmons? I don't know what he did to impress those mobsters, but it must have been hellacious. Uh, but he impressed them. And everybody knew not to fuck with Nate's family. And whenever he died, there was people coming and handing envelopes to his wife. And they weren't black people. They were white people in nice cars. He did something that impressed them big time. Uh, and I don't doubt that because I've been friends with his grandson for over 40 years now. And Nate's as good as they come, man. He's as solid as they come. That's what I tell him. Sometimes he'll get to hanging around shit over there. I tell him, man, you're fucking nobility. You got nobility running through your veins, and you're running around with fucking peasants, man. You lie down with fleas, you're going to dogs, you're going to get fleas. But Nate is a, he's a friend that a friend would want to have. That's a fact. Uh, there ain't many hairy legs I'd be letting stay at my house, but Nate's not just a hairy leg, he's my fucking brother. My own brothers don't even call me no more. All the shit I did, it didn't affect them. I'm the motherfucker that was locked up from 15 and a half on, and they weren't affected by that. The only person that hurt really was me and it hurt my mother. And she was an innocent person. But my brothers don't even return my call because me and my pops got into it. I, I didn't mind. I was the whipping boy my whole life. But once you're going to start attacking my wife, uh-uh, fuck that. Fuck that. He didn't protect me and my brother from the extreme mental abuse that went on in that house. But I protect mine. And ain't no way in hell gonna treat my wife like that. And when I was a kid, I didn't deal with that shit positively. And you gotta practice what you preach. 
I always say, you might have a right to be hurt, you might have a right to be angry, but it's how you deal with it that matters. I've thought about it, i thought about it, and the only positive way I could see to deal with it was to detach. Because I know myself, like I said earlier, one of my greatest strengths is that I know myself and I'm honest with myself. And I am to the point where I will match shout for shout and punch for punch. And that crazy bitch he's was says something ignorant to me. I'll tell her, hey, fuck you, cunt. Go fuck yourself, you ignorant bitch. And my father will have no choice but to respond to that. And I'll do whatever it takes to win. If I was wrong, I would have apologized a long time ago. But I'm not. My anger is justified in this. Neither one of them ever is wrong, nor would they admit it even if they were. So the only way I can think of to deal with it positively is to detach. Now my brothers, everybody's gonna say I'm stupid for this, but by me telling my father to go fuck himself, I fucked myself out of over a million dollars inheritance. And no, I am not bullshitting you. Over a million dollars. I never did care about money. I wished I cared about it a little more. Uh, but my principles are not for sale. Uh, I ain't gonna kiss nobody's ass for any amount of money. And my brothers like money. <laughs> my brother Kenny, whenever I first come back, you know, my stepmom all the time says, Kenny don't come around because he likes Brenda. That's my sister-in-law. He likes her family better and blah, 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 blah. Well, she says things so much, my father ends up believing them. And, fucking, okay. you know, he's saying, Kenny, don't come around because he likes Brenda's family. Me and my son, Josh, went, had lunch with my brother, Kenny, when I first got back. I said, why don't you go over and see Pop, Kenny? And he said, well, Mark, I got to protect my family. I'm tired of them throwing insults at Jane. And he, he goes, I only go over when I have to. My Uncle Rick, she sent a, na we call them nasty grams. She'll send these vicious emails and shit and messages out of nowhere. And my Uncle Rick responded to one of them, told her to go fuck her herself. And my dad called up my Uncle Rick and said, I'm gonna tear your fucking head off, motherfucker, and shit down your throat. And went up to Rick's work. And Rick and him did not talk for 10 fucking years. How dare he stand up to that bitch? But yeah, I fucked myself out of over a million dollar inheritance, uh, and I don't care. Money don't mean shit to me. I can't take it with me. It, but I'm, I guarantee you, my brothers are happy. They're gonna, they're gonna get that split too. <laughs> but fuck it, man. I don't give a fuck. You know. As far as being a man goes, I got Teflon armor. Uh, you cannot bribe me, because money really don't matter to me. I had a buddy, my buddy Johnny, as a matter of fact, he said, man, you was fucking gangster, Mark. I said, no, I wasn't. A gangster is about making money. I never cared much about money. I, I made enough to get by. And he said, well, you was violent enough to be a gangster. Hey, baby. Say it. No, say, tell me about it. I'll listen. I love my new ringtone. I'm going to have to get off here in Miami's home for a watch. Marge is out. Yeah, it's, that's, that's what you named it, Marge? I'm not sure. Let's go inside. Marge at least has two kids, Bart and Lisa. I got to cut the front yard, and I'm going to go for a ride. I might go for a ride and cut it later because it'll be cooler. It's hot. Oh, hi, sweetie. Hi, large Marge. See, there's Marge. Hi, Betty. Maybe Betty. 
Betty. Whoa, Brown Betty. Ba damn, ba damn. You're so cute. Brown Betty had a child. Bam, ba damn, damn thing going wild. I'm coming out of my depressive funk. This is McNutt. What we got here? Gray bar, that's for Seth. The big union, man. All right, guys. Much love to all of you. Take care.